Sorry about that, folks. What I was trying to say was, um, so, um, because the video kind of cut off by accident, um, so he basically fought the monster Chandler, and then for Ultraman, he basically beat him up in a very simplistic way. All he had to do was just, I don't know if he, um, I actually saw the part where, um, well, now I actually remember what it is now. I just forgot, but now I remember. He basically froze him over, and his back, I think, breaks breaks the rock. Like, the rock breaks his back or something, and then he's, like, trying to, you know, he's, like, getting up, and then he just falls down like that, and that's what happens in the original episode. He did appear, like, well, he didn't really appear. He just, his suit was reused for another monster called Abaros. From the uh, from episode 19, which was called "The Demons Rise Again," um, the Abaros looks like like it has the same design as Red King, except the head is different and it's all blue. And he's he fights with the weird monster Vanilla. He also appeared in this same series in the original as well. And then. After that, I'm not going to say the uh, history about Abaros, but I'm just going to say that his suit was reused. He appeared, I think it was, I don't know if it was this same one, or the one that was from Abaros, was reused again to create the second Red King. The second Red King looked very similar to this, except it had pupils, and I think its head was a tiny bit pointier, and it had more of a greenish-gray color or something. And sometimes in in the episode, he had this lump of, um, I don't know what it was. I think it was supposed to represent, because there is a part where he swallows a bunch of um, A-bombs, which means he swallowed a bunch of uh, nuclear atomic bombs. And he did this in a way that if he didn't do anything about it, Ultraman, he would basically sacrifice his own life, like, not kill himself, but he would just do it in a way that he would destroy the whole, um, he would destroy Japan. Yeah, pretty clever and evil at the same time. But before, um, so at first he was fighting this, um, ye well, the Yeti monster was also there too. I don't know if he was there before. Um, uh, obviously this is not the, well, there were, he fought a monster called Gigas or Gigas, who was basically like this, ape gorilla like creature it's kind of weird he had the same roars as king kong but it sounded more like gudon's roar he had like white on the top and just brown on the legs i'm just gonna have to use king kong as an example of you know something like that and then um and then this other cre uh, monster called Duraco. not this particular Duraco, but it was the it was close it was um well I'm going to explain this in another video, but the regular Duraco, not this revived version, but the regular one, was at first fighting the creature, and then Red King got involved and decided to beat um, Duraco up, and he actually brutally beat him by just tearing up his wings and pulled his tail upwards, probably trying to break him or something, and while the poor monster was like crawling, the two of them did this together, and then he just fell off again while he was crawling away. It was kind of sad. But I wouldn't say that he was a good monster either. It was kind of like with Vanilla and Abaros. But you know what I mean. It was... Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's probably how we got Reed Duraco. He probably uh, reappeared after that incident. Um, But whatever it is, yeah, that's basically um that one. So then he killed the both of the monsters, although one of them died from the science patrol. They shot him or something, and he had this effect where he was like this, and then he just exploded in pieces. And that's when Ultraman fought Red King. He was fighting Red King. This time he had to kill him in a way that was easier. By uh, He had this weird um, power where he can lift the monster up, and then he's like frozen in the air, and he used one of his, uh, saw things to cut him in three pieces, and when he had the head, he threw the head up in the air, because the head was filled with all the, um, A-bombs, and after that, 
um, it exploded in the sky. And he did this so that it wouldn't destroy the city. Because with all those, you know, A-bombs, nu nuclear bombs and, you know, any, you know, like the atomic bombs, they can actually destroy a city. So he didn't want that. Ultraman didn't want that. So you know what he had to do? He chopped them in pieces and threw his head up in the air. And then blew them up to smithereens. And kind of like with, you know, what I said before, sometimes his skin or his suit might have been reused for other monsters. The very infamous monster that his leg were reused for was for the monster Tyrant. Tyrant was a monster from Ultraman Taro that was made up with um, many different parts of, you know, many different monsters. That's kind of what the name goes by. But it's more of like a Frankenstein, though. Um, but yeah, that's what, and I think his legs were reused for other creatures in those times of eras. Um, but, yeah, and then after those, you know, those years, he eventually appeared in Ultraman 80, where he was called, uh, Red King Number 3, which looked very similar to, um, the other one, except he had a pointier head, and he still had eyes, but looked more taller, and just like, you know, with all the other Ultras, he was also killed by, um, and this time he got blown up in pieces. He didn't just got chopped off in pieces or just, you know, with a simple physical fight. He just got exploded in pieces. Like if he was ceramic. Now this, what I'm about to say, will make you sad and probably feel bad for Red King, what I'm about to say. He appeared in the, um, what was it called? The Ultimate Hero or Ultraman Powered. And this time, there were actually, in this one, there were actually two Red Kings instead of a Magular. There were two of them. The female one looked the same as the original, except it was more like a deformed dinosaur-looking thing. And the other one, the male, was actually red this time. And this time, people, they're like, hey, this time he's actually red. Now the name makes sense. But there's actually a history why his name is really called Red King. It's not because of how he looks, it's because of something interesting. So, basically, like with the other one, he fought Chandler. And after fighting with Chandler, it was actually kind of funny. Because not only when they move around, they were kind of just slow. It was also because um, they made this funny growl noise. It's like someone was doing it. It's like this, rah, rah. It didn't really go well with the sound, but that's how it was. And then, after Chandler, you know, after he fought Chandler, Ultraman came to the rescue. Um, and this is gonna make you sad. At first, this monster, you know, just like with, you know, before he was always bad, or, you know, that they were always bad. You know what happened? Um, they were trying to fight with each other, the female, you know, they were both fighting, you know, Ultraman. What happened was, when she was about to fight Ultraman, she accidentally ran off the cliff and just fell like this. And you can actually hear, I don't know if it was the other Red King or this one, where it was moaning and just, you know, because it was like getting hurt at the same time and just having her head smashed, everything. And you can just see how she's falling. And, and then the other one is just so sad that he even, like... He even, like, begs Ultraman not to even hurt him. He's, like, on the floor like this, and he's crying. He's like, don't, don't hurt me, please. And because of that, Ultraman decided to just keep the male one alive instead, instead of just killing him. And at first, everything, you know, it was a happy ending for Red King until the next episode, I believe, was when uh, there was Powered Duraco. Not this one, but it was a Powered version. I think it was a payback because since Red King killed Duraco one time, they decided that uh, Duraco would actually kill Red King, and he actually did. He, I think he ran up to him, and he had his knife hand and just chopped his, uh, he didn't chop his head off, but he just sliced his neck. And you didn't see it though, but it just, you know, he's just roaring and he just falls on the floor and he's dead. And then the other one just spreads his wings open like he's the boss, it's... And then you start to feel bad for this monster and just say, Red King may not be so bad after all. He's probably just, you know, like all the other monsters.
He was probably bad in other, you know, shows, yeah, but in other ones, he's not so bad. So that's what happened. And then after, you know, years later, that's when he appeared in the Ultra Galaxy Neo and other shows like Ultraman Mebius, Ultraman Max, and other Ultramans that you can imagine. Probably even appeared in movies and upcoming, you know, shows that they made. Because he's a very famous monster, just like with uh, Gomorrah. And, yeah. And there was a time where he appeared, I don't know if it was the first one, where he fought Sedora, in which he killed by choking him like this. Rawr, and just, you know, threw him down, and then he fought Telestan. I do have Telestan, like I said, but I lost him in the house, so I'm not so sure where he is, but I do have him. Um, but yeah, he did fight Telestan, and then, you know, he escaped Telestan, and I don't know if it was this one again, where Gomorrah fought, um, Red King, and this time I think Red King had a master or something, it wasn't Alien Guts, it was this other guy, and, you know, that's when the character Ray or something was there, I think that's his name, Ray, the guy who, uh, always says, um, transform Gomer or something. So, like, with all the other monsters, he did this where he just, you know, needled him with his nasal horn and just lifted him up in the air and just, you know, and then he died. He also appeared again with Gomera, except this time he was joined by Naranga, Telestan, and a monster called, uh, Bolton. But it wasn't, like, Bolton, like, you know, alien Bolton. It was a completely different monster. He was also in the same series. He was this giant ball-like creature, and he had this power in the Ultra Galaxy one where he was able to revive creatures like Geronimon. And that's what he did, and then, you know, like with all the other ones, Gomera obviously defeated them. That's probably the same. I didn't see much of it. I just saw the part where they were fighting. Um, and then, you know, he was dead. They also appeared again together, Gomorrah and Red King. I don't know if it was, um... And th there was a time where this time he was called EX Red King, where he had a larger hand and a, you know, very tiny legs. And then it was the same thing for Gomorrah, but Gomorrah had larger uh, hands than arms. And he, and he was called EX Gomorrah. And they teamed up to, I think, I don't know who, I think they were fighting one of the enemies. I don't remember which enemy it was, but I just saw the part where the two of them both transform and turn into EX monsters. And, yeah. So, that's basically that I, I'll, I all have to say for Red King. So, he's a very, very cool monster. And, you know, he's a monster you want to, you know... Um, you know, he's probably going to be one of your favorite monsters. As far as this monster... He is one of those monsters that you must have, even if you may not like him. Kind of like with Gomora. Even though you know you like to collect Ultras, you still should get this guy anyways. He may not be your favorite, but he is, you know... Like, if you want to do shows with, like, the recreation with Sedora or, you know, with Naranga and other monsters, he'd go well with it. Um... And another cool thing you should do with this one or any Red King you have is if you can, maybe you can just get another one like this or anyone, customize his head and paint it blue and you can have a, um, Aberus. There is actually an Aberus 500 toy that I, um, that I just saw on YouTube, but I don't have him though, unfortunately. But if you can't get that one, you can just simply get this and just customize his head. Or you can just leave it like this, but put pupils and have a Red King 2 or a Red King 3 if you want. And looking at him with the detail, he looks pretty good considering he's a Spark Doll. The only problem I have is his hands and his feet, but that's kind of understandable. His face looks good. His teeth are not individually sculpted, it's just part of the, you know, with the head. But it doesn't look bad, though. I mean, I don't expect him to have a hollow mouth anyways, because he's so, you know his head is so tiny anyways. So, yeah. Now let's move on to the articulation. 
First off, his arms can rotate 360 degrees like this. So you can, you know, do all sorts of positions. You can pose him. He'll still look good in any way. And his tail can rotate 360 degrees. So if you want him to look like he's dead, you can do that. Or you can just make it go straight because his tail is like curved. It is kind of stiff though, but it's not on a glue seal. It's actually supposed to rotate because his tail is curved. So you can just, you know, do it in any position. So yeah, so that's Red King. There you go. Now let's move on to size comparisons. First off, let's compare him to Ultraman. Hmm, I don't really think this is accurate. I think Red King is supposed to be a little bit bigger, like this. But if you don't really care, he may not look so bad. But, you know, that's how the Spark Dolls are. So, yeah. What about Gomera? Because Gomera is actually, you know, very, very main monster. I haven't, you know, cut the tag off, but I'm going to eventually. Hmm, the sizing actually doesn't look so bad, but I think he should be a little bit bigger. But for Gomera, since he's hunched like this, it doesn't look so bad. I mean, you can even recreate scenes where they're fighting. What about Sidora? Ah, uh, well, I remember in the show he was, like, the same size. But since Sadora is 60 meters, I think he should be about this tall. But if you don't care, it may not look so bad. I mean, you can even recreate the scene, like I said, where he's choking him, you know, like this. Um, what about Magular? Mm, well, the problem about Magular is that he's in his four-legged position. But if he was standing up, he wouldn't look so bad anyways. How about Naranga? Naranga doesn't look so bad. He's okay. Um, what about Duraco? I think, um, he was actually, like, about this big. Like, maybe the same size, but a little bit bigger. But, if you don't really care, it's okay, I guess. But, that's Duraco. What about King Ghidorah or King Ghidorah? You know... They have, you know, that very giant, you know, let's see. Actually, the scale doesn't look bad on uh, King Ghidorah. I remember King Ghidorah, I think, was a little bit bigger, but this doesn't look bad. You can either have them team up, or you can just have them, you know, fight with each other to see who's the boss, you know. Ah! How about a Redastore from the 2000 or 2000 Fathoms? Well, depending of which size of Redosaur you use, because sometimes he's in many different sizes, this may not look so bad. Um, what about Mr. Stay Puff? 